This example involves a company that manufactures ball bearings that are specified to be 1.25 inches in diameter. We're told that a random sample of size 37 has been collected and that, that sample had a mean diameter of 1.247 inches. Now we expect a little bit of variation from one ball bearing to the next, but the question really is, is this too much variation? In other words, is, is this evidence that really the population of all such ball bearings have a mean diameter that's something different than 1.25 inches? Here we're concerned about ball bearings that are either too big or too small. Either way, that's a problem. And so for a hypothesis test that we're going to carry out to uh, consider this situation, a two-sided test seems appropriate here. We're worried about whether the mean has moved away from 1.25, regardless of whether it was in the positive direction or the negative direction. All right, so our first step is to write down a null and alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is that the mean is still where it's supposed to be at 1.25. Our alternative is that it's not. So just mu is not equal to 1.25. The next step is to determine the value of the test statistic, the standardized test statistic, rather z. So remember, z equals x bar minus mu divided by sigma over the square root of the sample size n. And in this instance, let's see, our x bar, we're told, is 1.247. The mu here is always the mean under the null hypothesis, so 1.25 divided by, and let's see, our sigma is pretty small in this case, so it's 0 0.0118 over the square root of 37, our sample size. And if we calculate this, this turns out to be about minus 1.5465. Okay, now, the next step is to think about what the value of p is, the p-value. And since we have a two-sided alternative hypothesis, our p-value is going to be determined by finding the area below the normal curve out in both tails. So specifically, we'll draw a little picture here of z. So here's 0. Our test statistic is over here, minus 1.5465. So p will be equal to not just this area here, but also the area from a positive 1.5465 on up. And the reason for this, again, is the, really the definition of the p-value. So the p-value is the probability of getting a, a standardized test statistic as extreme or more extreme than the one we actually found, given that the null hypothesis is true. Okay, now an extreme in this case means either way. Okay, so what we need here to calculate the p-value is the total of those two areas there. Well, the distribution is symmetric, so really if we just have the area in the lower tail, then we can just double it. Okay, so p is equal to just twice, and we can use norms dist to do this. Oops. DIST of minus 1.5465. And I'll dispense with actually showing how Excel calculates this and instead just report the news. It turns out to be 0 0.1212. That's not a particularly small p value, and so it's not clear whether or not we have strong enough evidence to conclude that the process of manufacturing the ball bearings needs some sort of adjustment. This falls into kind of a gray area. It would really depend on whatever the industry standard might be in this particular instance.